Hi guys, it's Sharon here from Butterfly Lullaby and the date is the 8th of February 2023. I don't know if you have ever had a go at making a book, a handmade book. Well, I made one last night for my mum. She's very sick at the moment and she's in hospital. So I thought that I'd take time and uh, make something lovely for her. You know, it's taken my time. And um, I'm really quite happy with it. It's got the spine. I've covered it in lovely, like, uh, fake suede. And uh, it's got the pages in there that can flip through. So, um, have you heard of a book cradle? Well, you need a book cradle. This is what most people use. Um, but I've used a chessboard. And it's brilliant. So, um, you know, it's just that. In a shoebox. And I've mapped out, not very well, but I've mapped out my holes there um, to make all the punches. There's lots of videos on YouTube on how to make a book. So I'll probably add some to my blog because I think it's nice to share videos for people and support them. So that's what I'm going to do. And so you can have a go at making your own book. So good luck, guys. And uh, let me know what you think of this. You know, you might be able to pick up an old chess board from you know I don't know a boot fair or somewhere and uh, it makes a really good book cradle for punching your pages take care have fun and uh, I'd love to see your little designs maybe pop by and say hello on my little um, art group on Facebook I'll try and add the link to this description take care bye bye Hi guys, it's Sharon here from Butterfly Lullaby and the date is the 10th of February 2023 and here's a handmade book that I made from scratch for my dear, dear mum who I adore um, and I just think how lucky I am to have family because my nan was a child orphan and she went out of her way to make sure we got the childhood she never had so I feel very, very lucky and fortunate. I spoke to my mum the other day and I, um, she was in tears, she's in hospital, it's a long story, but um, I just felt my, I choked, it was just, oh, what can I do to make my mum smile, that's what I thought. So here it is, I love mum. It's even got a spine, this book, um, so I'm really quite, it's my first attempt at making a book like this. I did make some fabric books years ago, which are on my channel, which you can check out. Um, it says here, for my lovely mum, handmade by Sean J. Bainbridge, 2023. So, I thought what would be really lovely... By the way, I'm going to add some videos, because I think caring is... Sharing, rather, sharing is caring. And I think that by sharing YouTube videos, craft videos, you know... Being a team player is a good thing. Sorry, do can you get that off my thing? <laughs> I've got Doodle Boo, my daughter's cockapoo next to me, and he's a little bit of a mischief. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to add my blog to this um, video description, and you can check out some wonderful videos on how to make a book. And um, yeah, so I just think that it's important to share videos. But anyway, on the first page, so I thought it'd be lovely to just write down all my happy childhood memories and put them down in this book. I, mean, I haven't put everything down here because it would take me too long, but I've managed to fill about 30 pages. So the first page is, and my drawings are, <laughs> are not great, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, Mum wanted me to go to art college because um, I still love drawing. I really loved drawing as a kid. But I tell you what, seeing what my daughter goes through in college and studying art and how she's really had to practice 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 uh, uh that's not for me i just i like to wing it i'm a winger so um and i don't care about perfection so yeah i would not have lasted in art college or university no way so um but i admire anybody that does and i admire my daughter so much for sticking it out but anyway, so this is a dress my mum made for me when I was very young, a little toddler, and it's a turquoise dress with black ribbon along the front and on the sleeves, and I 
love this dress. I still love it and turquoise is still my favourite colour. So I thought I'd put that in on the first page. So my mum used to be a seamstress. She used to take me to work with her. You know, that's the good old days where, you know, you were able to do that with some companies. And I love that because that's really family orientated. I love the thought of, um, you know, I wish our government supported work from home schemes where mothers can work from home and be with their children. Uh, here he goes again. But anyway, that's another story. So another page. My mum, you know, she's suffered so much for her life, but she was always, no matter how she felt, she picked herself up, dusted herself off, and she made sure that she supported me when I needed her most, when I was suffering and fighting to breathe with asthma. So she used to give me oranges, and I love oranges, I still love them. And even when I was pregnant, um, that's the thing I craved, was oranges. So thank you, Mum, for that. Thank you. And the funny thing is, is that I make smoothies now, and I've cured my asthma with smoothies, and I add oranges to these smoothies, and my, my wild herbs that they call weeds in the UK, I add my favourite herb to that. Uh, and I'm asthma and drug free and I love that. Not bad for a 56 year old. Um, so yeah, keep researching guys, do your own research and be a free thinker. Play mud pies. Um, oh my gosh, I just used to love playing. And the thing I love about my mum is that she always encouraged me to play. You know, she said that, you know, <laughs> when I was very little, I used to go out to the sand pit and I get used to get filthy day. Come back, sand in my hair, and I'd be like knocking on the door, Mummy, apple, biscuit. And I'd go off again, playing again with my friends. Um, you know, she really let me play. And, you know, I used to make my pies in the gardens and that, and I used to get really muddy, and she didn't care. You know, all my clothes were filthy from the mud be rolling in it and uh, you know she just used to encourage it and that's what I love about my mum because I really got to be a child I really got to play and enjoy being a kid I didn't want to grow up guys you know I'd be sitting on that swing when I was about I don't know nine years old thinking I don't want to grow up I just want to stay a child forever because I just love being a child so that was the apple and biscuit thing yeah when I'd knock 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 Apple biscuit, mum, apple biscuit. <laughs> and then school, you know, I hated school. But the thing that got me to school, and people go, oh, sweets, so bad for you. But, um, yeah, the thing that got me to school were the sweets. I love sweets. I've still got a sweet tooth now. But, um, yeah, thank you, mum, for the little pocket money to get me to school. You know, I used to walk to school. I got my sister to school um, as well. I used to walk her to school. Yeah, Sherbet Dib Dab. Remember that? Love hearts, blackjacks. Loved it all, loved it all. My first um, nursery school memory was singing, This is the way we wash our hands, wash hands, wash hands. So I can't sing. <laughs> but anyway, um, I love that. Still sticks in my memory. It's, it's amazing. I mean, like, because... Um, I was talking to um, one of my friends who's got a little um, YouTube channel called, I think it's Sing, oh my gosh, that's my dyslexia, I forgot, and what's he got now, he's got something in the background, I'm going to have to close up and restart this video again, but anyway, that was a happy memory of singing that nursery rhyme, nursery rhymes are so important for children to make learning fun, they really do, need more of it, more of it. Here is my very first memory of Christmas when I started a new school. Uh, it was primary. I remember going to the play where they were singing Away in the Manger, the children, and it was so spectacular. My gosh, it just felt like the best Christmas ever. And it was, oh, it was wonderful. Just standing there with my mum and watching this and just feeling like real Christmas and waiting for Santa to arrive. Oh, I just loved it, absolutely loved it. It's such a special memory for me.
and waiting for Santa. Oh my gosh, you know, the excitement. Just, I mean, I know not everybody's into Christmas um, and, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I do believe in God and I I like the Ten Commandments because I think it's got nice values and morals, but um, I wouldn't push my thoughts onto other people. I think that, you know, I just love people for who they are. If they're kind people, that's good enough for me. So anyway, waiting for Santa, you know, every Christmas I'm really like, I want to wait up, I'm going to wait up for Santa. And then when I got to about seven years old, found my dad coming in the room <laughs> with the stocking and put it on the bench. Oh, that was disappointing. <laughs> so that was really sad for me. I wish I hadn't waited for Santa because I just loved the magic of Christmas, just believing this old guy would deliver Christmas presents to all the children. It was just so magical. And the reindeer, it was something else. I loved it. I just... I don't know, there's something about being a child and just having that, you know, that imagination that anything's possible. I just, because that goes, doesn't it, when you get older. And that's a shame because we need to keep that magic going, keep the imagination going. Um, so I wrote about that for my mum and the happy times we had with her family. And, you know, we used to visit a family in Kent, in England, etc. Doctor Who, oh my gosh. When I was a kid, Doctor Who was black and white, and I've got one of my oldest, dearest friends, Carol. We used to hide behind the sofa, and it was a black and white Doctor Who back then, so it's nothing compared to the kids' programmes today. Um, and then when we used to sort of... Because um, we weren't far away from each other, just a few houses away, we used to run to, to the middle, and then we used to run back to our homes, um, and it was just lovely, lovely memory. And, you know, Carol's such a dear friend of mine. She knitted me a beautiful blanket. She's knitting my mum a blanket now. I can't thank her enough. She's such a kind, lovely person. I'm lucky to have her as a friend. I mean, I've written about the Daleks. You know, the Daleks, I mean, aren't they funny creatures? Uh, whoever invented them is quite hilarious because it's got, like, a whisk for the kitchen as one of the arms and a toilet plunger. <laughs> God, it just makes me crack up. But anyway, um, Top of the Pops was another memory that, um, oh my gosh, I just loved growing up with Top of the Pops. And we had music in our house all the time. My mum was always playing records, um, you know, and I've got so many lovely memories of all the different music she used to play. Adam and Faith, what do you want if you ain't got money? I don't know if I got the lyrics right there. <laughs> you know, and Glen Campbell, um, I'm a lonesome cowboy. <laughs> so I've been listening to some of these music tracks on YouTube. Um, but I've got a record player now and I can't play it because part of it's missing. I don't know, the plug that plugs it in is missing. So I need to sort something out there because I'd love playing records. I've got happy memories of me as a child, you know, blasting all my records, you know, when I was 16, 17, and even younger, you know, to play Elvis Presley, etc., in my bedroom. Um, pocket money. I used to get 50 pence a week for washing up for my mum, dear old mum, and I used to save up. And I, my first record that I bought with my 50p was Good Luck Charm by Elvis Presley. And, you know, it was just so amazing. I just felt so good to be able to go out and, you know, buy something. So I've learned about money at a very young age and how to save it up. And, you know, I was very good with money. Um, so what else have we got? Unselfish mum. Um, yeah, my mum, she made sure that, you know, I got to see all my family and even though my parents split up, they didn't go to court. This is when I was about four years old. Um, they just basically, they said, my mum said, you know, who do you want to live with? And at four years old, I knew that my mum was a better parent. So I chose my mum and I chose wisely. I'm so glad I chose my mum. I mean, if I chose my dad, there's no way my dad could have looked up to me. <laughs> Love him. Um, but um, I would have gone to my nan. You know, my nan would have raised me. She wanted to adopt me, actually. But um, I'm so glad that I stayed with my mum. And my mum remarried and I've got a fantastic stepfather. He's absolutely amazing. He really is. 
he's an absolute rock to us all. So, um, also, you know, my mum was very young when she had me, and I just can't thank her enough. So I said, you know, thank you for keeping me, mum. You know, I was she was only 19 when she had me, and she didn't have an easy time of it. So I feel very, very lucky. And that's my terrible attempt <laughs> at drawing a little bunny that I had, a yellow bunny that was bought for me in the 60s when I went into a hospital of asthma. So, um, yeah. That's, I don't know. I think that, guys, if you create a book like this, and it doesn't have to be fancy, just writing it. I mean, my writing is pretty rough and scribbly. But, you know, my mum, I know she's going to love this because it's the time and thought that's gone into it. And, the, you know, rem reminding her of all the happy times we had when we were children. And it's thanks to her that, you know, I've got all these lovely memories. And I think that's so important that we, you know, I don't know, just respect our parents and be thankful for all the sacrifices they give us. You know, um, I feel that... I took my mum for granted when I was in school because I was away from her and I thankfully got to home educate my daughter um, because she was bullied in school and she begged me to home educate and the bond that I got with my daughter through home educating is just something that I treasure so much and feel so lucky that I had that experience and uh, you know she's just yeah I just adore her I adore her so anyway um all our pets, so Dusty Dog, <laughs> this is going to make you laugh. My dad told me last, this is my stepdad, but I call him dad. I think of him as my dad. He's, he's the one that raised me. He's just amazing, an absolute angel. But um, yeah, anyway, he said to me, did you know that you said to me, you asked me when you was a little kid, if I killed your dog, <laughs> Dusty, <laughs> did I run over your dog, Dusty? That's the first thing that came out of my mouth when I first met my stepdad um so poor dad <laughs> that just shows just shows you know no fear i've got i've never had no fear obviously from a very young age i just speak my mind did you kill my dog <laughs> poor old dad um yeah so poor old dusty lovely lovely dog but she obviously got run over um Ben Jemima. Now, Ben Jemima, the rabbit, now that's a funny old story because uh, we had an Uncle Red. He wasn't really our uncle, but in those days we used to call everybody uncle and auntie, you know, who were friends. So he bought this wild rabbit back and this rabbit, my gosh, used to get out and used to, she used to go and see the other rabbit, which was down the couple of gardens and she got pregnant. But um, when we had to move, because we were staying in my nan's house, she bought this lovely house in Hastings near the sea. It was absolutely wonderful. What a childhood I had living near the sea, going to the beach all the time. The park was nearby. Oh, my gosh. It was just like, oh, I can't, you know, I just look back and I smile with all the joyful memories. You know, you're going to have some bad memories, of course. You know, you can't get through life without a few bad memories, but... The memory, the good memories outweigh the bad ones, without a doubt, you know, absolutely. So, Benjamin Rabbit. Um, so, we had to give her up when we moved into the flat. So, my mum and dad bought a flat when then sold her house. And Mary Doggy, I mean, I was, being asthmatic, I was so allergic to all these animals. Um, but I loved them, I just loved having them. And Mary, I adored. She got run over as well, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, and I used to rub my eyes, sneeze, wheeze, etc. But, yeah, I used to still get a cuddle from these doggies. I'm not allergic to animals now, thanks to my daily smoothies. So I just feel very lucky. Judy Doggy. Now, Judy Doggy, oh, my gosh, what a mischief she was. She would get out. As soon as you open that door, she'd boom, out the door, out the front door. And every time I tried to get the bus, which was down the road, she'd get on that bus. Oh, nightmare. <laughs> I'd like to try and run around catching her. I'd be late for college, etc. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Oh. But you look back and you just laugh, don't you? And I just say thank you, Mum, for my brother and sister, because I feel very lucky to have siblings. And, um, yeah, of course, I love them both very much. Um, oh, my mum always encouraged me to 
draw and be an artist. She wanted me to be an artist. She wanted me to go to college, but there's no way. I mean, I've seen what my daughter has to go through with art and how she has to really sort of study the muscles, the bones, perspective. Um, it is really technical. And the annotations, the amount of annotations she has to write, I would be bored silly because I like to fluke it, guys. I don't, I care about perfection. Perfection's overrated for me. I just feel like, just do it. Just go with the flow. Um, so that's what I like to do. So I got into secretarial field, which was brilliant because I'm dyslexic. So it helped me to spell better. So that's another story. But Melody, that's my daughter. So my mum helped support my daughter with her arts by giving her some money towards a cello and her arts, etc. Et and I uh, just can't thank mum enough, you know, and, and my dad, of course, as well. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully my daughter will get into the university she wants to get into um and uh cause she's got an amazing cello teacher absolutely outstanding and she said you know that she believes that the cello is a musical instrument that melody's meant to play so um yeah just watch this space i hope to share a video of my daughter playing the cello one day best mum so i mean i remember coming home and <coughs> excuse me and having my mum there I mean, I know she had a little cleaning job now and again, but she was always went to the cleaning job when I was asleep in bed, and we used to go to bed early, about seven or something like that. So um, it was just so lovely coming home and having mum there. So I just feel so thankful for that. Um, all right, Gary. So that's it, guys, really. Just like, you know, just thanking my mum for being my mum. So I hope you enjoyed this video and, you know, if you've got a wonderful mum, maybe you want to take time and make her a little book from scratch like I did. And, you know, you could scrapbook it as well if you're not happy with drawing little drawings. Uh, cut out pieces, stick them in, you know, even cut out the text if you want to. It's up to you, you know, do whatever you feel like. But I think that going back and remembering happy memories because of our parents is something... Our parents were treasure, and especially our mums, you know, I think they're, we're very sort of um, emotional creatures, women and mothers, and we love this sort of thing. We love homemade gifts. But well, I'm going to leave you with some art by my daughter, pages. Melody Angel Art, who's on Instagram, and, you know, i just in awe of her art, as I am with many people that um, are artists on YouTube, etc., my daughter, I encouraged her to draw when she was very, very young and two years old. I thought, wow, she's got some character design there when she's just drawing in the bank. And I just thought, oh, I like this. So I just encouraged her to draw and paint. And she created lots of wonderful art and craft videos for YouTube with me when she was little. And um, I cherish those. She was called Little Snowflake or Snowdrop. But I would say that if you've got children, just be careful on um, the internet because some things are not child and family friendly, as you know. You know this anyway. So, yeah, just keep an eye on your kids. Keep them safe. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.